Hello again everybody and welcome to Back to Basics Gaming. We are playing X-Men 1993 for the Sega Genesis. Yep, it's just straight up called X-Men. Um, I got this back when I was 9 years old and I'm going to go on ahead and give it a playthrough and try to beat it. Uh, win or lose, I'm going to give it my all. Um, this is going to be kind of like a let's play slash review hybrid. Since the game is so short, I can pretty much go through it all, with uh, or almost all of it, depending if I'm successful, um, playing it and just kind of reviewing it and giving my thoughts about it, a little bit of insight. So uh, just really quick for starters, it's, uh, well, I guess we could just kind of get into it and explain as things go on. So let's do it. and go so it has a kind of a backstory uh, yeah I guess I should actually talk about uh, my setup that I got here so what my setup is is I actually do own this game I'll, uh, if I remember to I'll put it in the beginning of the video as proof that I do own this but I am actually playing it off emulator because it's just easier to record and do stuff like that instead of having a million wires going everywhere and I really haven't found a simple solution other than uh, <laughs> I'm using a Kega Fusion emulator with fraps and uh, just a standard uh, voice recorder with a rock band mic yep the very same rock band mic that I've been using ever since I uh, started this channel so uh, yeah I definitely need a new mic too so the game has alright well yeah enough about that but anyways that's my setup in case you're wondering oh and I'm playing with a PS4 controller so I might hit the wrong button every now and again. So we got three difficulty levels. Amateur is going to pretty much be a waste of time. Well, the only reason why I say that is because you are only allowed to play three levels. The game offers six. So playing an amateur will only give you half of the game. Hero will give you the whole game. And superhero, well, the games are already hard enough as it is on hero, so I'm just going with that. Uh, I don't know what makes Superhero Super. Uh, yes, as you can see, this game is two-player, and that's pretty much just suicide. As you can see here, the little icons, um, if you have bad vision, I apologize, but you got Cyclops, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Gambit. I like using Cyclops for the first level. Kind of cool, they give them a, you know, bit of insight on the hero that you're selecting. I always did like that. And there you go. Um, this game is pretty much impossible with two players. I mean, it isn't literally impossible, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. So, yeah, you get a double jump, regular punch, kick. Um, you can use your mutant ability. I like going like this. I like doing that. Um, he also has a special attack if you um, hit the mutant ability while jumping he shoots out optic blast I'm kinda of being cheap but I'll show you there you go mutant ability runs off of a bar as you can see yellow bar up top is your health mutant ability is the blue so there you go first level is the savage land yes this game has backstory to and stuff like that so you know if you are uh, interested in that by all means read up on it or play it or whatever I'm just gonna be pretty much playing the game and talking about it but I really do actually, um, I really, yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. I really do enjoy this game's graphics. I think that they're really nice. They actually look a little tighter on um, on uh, the smaller screen since I'm playing on my computer. The, the monitor um, really makes it look a lot nicer as opposed to my 55-inch, um, you know, HD TV. And I know that that's really not the way to play classic games, but I just haven't gotten around to getting an actual CRT. Um, they still do sell them in thrift stores and all that, but uh, again, I've just been kind of lazy on it. So yeah, this is the Savage Land. Um, I like the colors, even though like Sega's palette is still like a bit more drab. I bet this game would have looked phenomenal on the SNES, but it wouldn't have sounded as good. Um, one of the strong points I feel in this game is that it is just quite phenomenal uh, music. It's very catchy. The sound effects are very fun. Uh, yeah, I'm also having uh, some lag issues. I guess that just kind of goes with the territory when uh, recording gameplay. This is only a major factor 
whenever I'm like uh, jumping over a pit in the later levels because um, and it and might be actually a good reason as to why I don't complete the game but uh, falling in pits whoo man it, it takes a lot of damage despite the fact that Jean Grey will actually lift you out of the pit uh, I guess I could show you so it only takes off a little bit in this stage but the further you progress for whatever reason it just hurts a hell of a lot more like literally the later levels it'll take out half of your health bar so we're coming up to our first boss in the game and this is juggernaut there's actually a way to skip him I want to talk about bosses really quick um, but yeah there is a way to skip him but it uh, requires nightcrawler so the way that bosses work in this game is kinda weird um, they have really strange hitboxes and a lot of times they're uh, invulnerable except when they're in a in a certain pose in a certain frame so the key to beating juggernaut is like so let's lure him on over come on and I just kinda go with this method I don't bother using my mutant ability or anything like that I don't even think it does a lot of damage to him but for whatever reason Kicking him in the head seems to do the trick. That sound effect, I love that sound effect a lot, and I like the way it looks when, like, you know, the hologram disappears, because you got to remember, this is the danger room. But um, it really, really sounds like a toilet bowl flushing. And you hear that sound many times. So um, if, you're, if you don't really care for platforming, then you should probably just stop watching this and never play this game. But uh, there's a way to skip some tricky platforming in this stage and just be up top here and wait for Sauron to cruise on by. Ignore that. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth the trouble. And there you go. Jump off here. Make a nice big jump here. And there you go. Punch your way through this thing. And now we're going to... Um, I guess I should explain. So here's our mutants. You can actually switch between them. Um, at any time, kind of, and only for the top row. The bottom row are uh, assistant um, mutants. You can only use them, you know, they'll do special attacks to your enemies, but you can't actually use them. At first, when I first played this game, I'm like, oh man, you can be all these people too? But no, it's kind of a tease. They're just the helpers, the special moves, if you will. But um, these guys here, yes, you can switch between them so many times per stage. It depends on the stage, it's kind of weird. Um, each has their perk, Rogue Attacks, Archangel Attacks, and Storm Attacks. Iceman's the only one who actually, um, well, he just does stuff. And by stuff, I just mean one thing. Form an Ice Bridge. And I just do that because I'm too lazy to try and, like, actually platform that. And I'm too lazy to actually fight this, this lady, so... I usually just call on my buddies here there you go um, the your your um, helper mutant buddies they'll be usable again for the next level or if you find uh, one of their hero icons you can also then use them again like as you've seen uh, there was a rogue one that I passed by when I was riding on Sauron I don't know if they stack or not. I want to say no, but it's it's kind of been a while since I tested that out. So the next couple stages, actually the next few stages, are going to be with Nightcrawler. Because he is hands down the best mutant in the game. And I will show you why. Nightcrawler is very good at uh, just kind of skipping the game. He's got a good uh, downward range attack. You want to be pretty much Nightcrawler in the stage, but if you want to actually explore the stage and this and that, I suggest be anybody except Gambit, because he's just too damn tall, and uh, he often gets hit. See how I'm just crouching like this? If I was Gambit, that would be hitting me. So yeah, no Gambit in this level. I barely ever use Gambit, actually. I, uh, the only time I've actually used him is like in the, like the most desperate of situations. So here, I'm going to have to... Using the teleport is very, very taxing on Nightcrawler, so you can only, you know, uh, use it so much. Sorry, I'm getting a bit of lag here, that's why I'm stumbling over my words. But anyways, 
Come on, guy. Um, I always felt that taking the top, the top road this way, is just a hell of a lot faster. Highly suggest. Um, see, there's one of them hero icons that I was telling you about. But yeah, you don't you don't want to be making your way through this stage. The enemies are a bit more aggressive here. Open this up, grab the key. <clears throat> yeah, that that's a key. It had the letter K on it, so I guess that means it's a key. There's actually a high jump you can do. <laughs> oh man, I'm trying to do it. There you go. It's um it's almost impossible to do as Nightcrawler and Wolverine with um with uh, Cyclops and Gambit it's a lot easier but anyways yeah you need the key to open this door and it leads you outside in the space like how all this is possible I don't know so I did that because it's kinda like pushing me back a bit and I didn't want to fall and then you just have to dodge the meteorites and whatnot It's it's a bit weird. I know I haven't found too many um, videos of people really like explaining the game or anything like that. So I just kind of figured, ah, what the hell? It's kind of a short game. I'm decent at it. Now I, I don't know if I can get, can guarantee you that I'm going to be able to beat the game or not. But I'm going to try and show you as much as I can. I would at least like to get to the last level. But um, the game is definitely challenging, though. Yeah, you got to keep doing this for a while. Kind of kind of sucks. But there you go. Once it stops, make your way through. You can zip over here, kind of cheat, and then you'll be at the boss. You storm there. Then I use Rogue if if I don't lag. Toilet bowl sound. There's um if you're having a hard time with the game. There's actually some health hidden over here. This music is phenomenal. Um, sometimes there's health or mutant power hiding in these things. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. And there's actually another just chilling over here too. So Hit that. Look at her arms. I love how her arms move. Okay. So um, we're going to stay as Nightcrawler, so a little bit of story there. I really do hate this guy's jump. You would think Nightcrawler would have one of the most OP jumps in the game, but he just doesn't. Alright. I love this background, too. I really think it's great. I'm going to show you uh, kind of uh, another cheat here that you can do. But, um... Right here is actually a boss fight, but we're going to skip that boss fight altogether, and we're going to uh, use Iceman, make this bridge, and for whatever reason, it doing that doesn't trigger the game to have you fight Sabretooth. Not that Sabretooth is a hard fight or anything like that, but it's like, who, who the hell wants to do that, you know? I'm sure you guys probably want to see it, but there's actually a lot in this level I'm going to skip. If you thought that that skip was pretty big, here's an even bigger one. Just do this, and you're already on your way to the boss in this level. This stage was intended to be a maze, to go up and down and all around, but instead, if you're Nightcrawler, just do that. I'm sure the developers um, were not thinking um, too well on that. And then you fight Apocalypse, and this is literally the fight right here. Now, this is where the game would end if you were playing on Amateur, but... <laughs> Yeah, I also love this tactic that I have of, like, beating him. You're pretty much untouchable against this guy. Which I think is funny, considering Apocalypse is, like, one of, like, the strongest mutants ever. And Nightcrawler can just take him out so easily. Toilet bowl sound, and there you go. Or toilet bowl flush, sorry. Sound. What do you guys think of X-Men Apocalypse, man? I, uh, I gotta be honest with you. I bought it on, uh, Prime. And sorry, getting a spot of lag there. We're gonna be Nightcrawler again, by the way. <clears throat> Did 
thought I missed that jump. Um, I, I really didn't care for the movie. I really thought that they got Apocalypse wrong. I mean, like, I thought his, like, whole menacing ways was apocalypse -y, But, yeah. So, yeah, these little orbs right here, I don't know if I went over them or not, but I guess I'll just do it again if, if I already did. But they replenish a little bit of health and a little bit of mutant energy. Um, also, the danger room simulations will start up just like that. I was going to actually show you a trick to um, not have the level start up so quick so you can collect those orbs. If I remember in this after this stage, if there's an after, because uh, this place can get kind of tough. This is pretty much um, the end of the line for most uh, most people who played this game. Um, they got they got up to this level and then that was it. And if they didn't there, then they most certainly did somewhere else, which I will show you. So yeah, let's just get up here. You now you got to do some fancy uh, some fancy work here. Is old Nightcrawler. You gotta be quick on the draw with that mutant ability to fight those weird little plane things. I really hate those things. But um, it's necessary because you want to stick to the roofs as much as possible. You, we're gonna actually be going down in a bit, but you don't want to. You'll be skipping a lot of stuff by staying up here. Okay. I just all I did was just use my mutant ability just to get past that. Again, we gotta. I wasn't quick on the draw that time. All right, I got some pop up, and it needs to go away because it's lagging me. So there we go. All right, sorry about that. Um. Now, the mutant power, in order to teleport, you're going to need a decent amount of mutant power, so I'm going to wait until it just slightly gets up again. That should be enough. Oof. Okay. Alright, that's pretty, that's pretty decent, actually. That's, that wasn't too shabby with the roof. Or with the roof. Roof. Roofs. Roofs. Is it roofs if you say it that way? Okay, so there's some tricky platforming right here. I want to make that jump because uh, things can get unnecessarily complicated if I don't. Then you want to use the Man of Ice over here. Just make your way through. You want to be careful of these tanks in here because, yeah, they'll crack open and... Uh, I don't know, some weird monsters come out. So yeah, you want to be careful. So uh, normally you would need a key. If you didn't have Nightcrawler, you would need a key to open that up, which looks just like that one ball thing that I got from the second stage. But if you got Nightcrawler, you know, you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, again, your mutant power, if you want, you can use it to to get past all this nonsense, too. Um, I'm not going to do it because I don't have a lot of mutant power, and I don't feel like waiting around. And uh, there's these two things up here. This is the reason why I'm jumping, is not to be an ass, but just to actually show you. There's, uh, there's two things up here that you can destroy, but it's very risky to do. Uh, you got to double jump it, and it, it's, it, it's a mess to do. It, it really, really is. So I highly suggest, if you don't feel like using the mutant power with Nightcrawler, um, just call on Storm. It, it'll be fine to do that. She'll get rid of that. You grab this. And, uh, yeah, by calling her up, she successfully destroys these two things up here. Um, they're, like, off to the right a little bit. They got, like, flashing red lights up on them. Uh, well, anyways, just call her there, and she'll take care of the problem. Now on to the boss, and I'll show you a simple way to take them out. Again, best if you uh, use Nightcrawler. And it's pretty much the same approach that you did with Apocalypse, but um, he'll, he'll come back. Ooh, getting a lag spike. But uh, he'll come back, and he'll throw, and then he'll come back, and he'll shoot. And he always alter alternates in this way. Um, sometimes 
that weird portal that shoots those little plane looking things will pop up ooh I wasn't ready for that one uh, it's smarter to fight him up top I think but um, yeah there you go so there you go there's that stage now, um, yeah, it didn't look too bad, but trust me, that's only if you stick to the roofs and do exactly what I did. Then, yeah, then it's a cakewalk. Um, you hit this to switch your character. For some reason, you can't do it w until you advance the screen, because then it advances, like, the story, too. So, yeah, those orbs are just kind of flying all over the place. Um, yeah, we're actually going to be somebody else. Well, not really. We're just going back to Cyclops, because I prefer him... Um, in the next stage. The orbs, yeah, sometimes they get glitched and they'll just freeze right there. So if you're low on health or whatever, it's a good way to collect them. Because uh, if you don't do it, then you gotta collect them the normal way, like that. And I don't know. It's all glitchy and weird. Um, Alright, I just barely remembered. So if you want to extend your time in the danger room as it normally is, jump over here and hit that thing up there right in the um, northeast corner of the room and also I will explain this game has a cheat code with level select and with it you can actually um, each of these panels I guess kinda like represents a level or something like that even though there's only six levels though so I'm not sure is there more levels on superhero? <laughs> have I been playing the game wrong the whole time? I don't think so no, no, there isn't, actually. But anyways, um, yeah, if you use that cheat code, you go over here and, well, just look it up. It's great to practice, you know, like, if you're stuck on a level or whatever, you know, use that level select, go to the desired level, you know, that you need, and practice on it, man. Alright, so now we're in uh, Mojo's World. It's that one weird fat blob, dude. Maybe if I'm not too lazy, I'll edit in a picture of him. Um, so, so it's, yeah, just timing. See, this is the bad thing about if the game is to lag on me. And uh, I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little hazy on, um, on this stage. I thought this thing was supposed to duck and shoot at you. I guess not. Get these T-1000 dog things. Um, this fire hurts like a motherfucker, so try not to get hit by it. There's also exploding TVs, because, I don't know. But yeah, I think it's a good game. Every level has its own unique, uh, music. Um, you know, it's... <laughs> it's by no means a masterpiece, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, it's, it's pretty good. You don't want to fall, you really don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm so scared to fall because, it, like I said earlier, it really, really hurts. And, uh, yeah, you really want to... You really want to look before you leap. Um, because there's plenty of situations with weird enemies in here, and you can e they can easily take a cheap shot at you. Especially this guy. I really don't like this dude. I think I got him. I got the volume set really low. Yeah, this guy. Oh, that's right. You're probably wondering what that thing is on the left. This is actually the, um... I think I got him. This is actually the only stage in the entire game that has a timer. This is also... This is also uh, a stage that houses a very, very unique thing that I don't want to spoil for you so I'm just gonna wait and explain it when it happens um, if we get there which I mean we we should I think there's another one yeah see you don't want to rush into anything you can charge up the optic blast as you've seen just hold the button down they can get it ready to rock and roll over here's some health in case he took some damage earlier and then come on down ooh man nasty lag spike right there now um, if you're a nightcrawler I think you're actually able to if you teleport through this wall here 
you can actually skip this next boss fight. But I don't like playing this Nightcrawler in this stage. I really like being able to shoot the bla optic blasts and all that good stuff. So here is our boss for this stage. And it's Mojo. Um, only Storm is going to be able to do anything to him. The only way that you're going to be able to hurt this idiot is by jumping around him and hitting him in the back. Like I attempted to do. I kind of failed there. But yeah. You'll see like the electricity kind of spark. Ugh. And you got to be a little more quicker than I am because right now I'm not doing a good job. I got to be honest with you. I really don't like these controls. Um, the last time I played this was on like the actual hardware. <laughs> so... For me, you know, a, a Sega Genesis controller is, it's really the only way to go. I know people say emulation is awesome and this and that. And, you know, I, I agree to an extent. I really do. And, yeah, I'm actually getting hurt pretty bad here. So I might have to, um, I think I'm going to play it safe. And I think I'm going to call, or maybe change. Um, what should I do? Maybe just... This should be okay. Alright, kind of concentrating a little bit. I really don't... I, I mean, like, I really do want to just get to the next stage. I don't want to bungle anything. There you go. That was a nice big toilet flush there, and the level is not over yet. Um, that time... Take note, the timer, too. It's still going. Um, Gambit has good range. Standing up. Decent. Crouching down. Um, he can do that when you double jump and attack. Up here is health. I highly recommend you skip it, though. It's really not worth it unless you're really dying. Because um, it house, it's housed inside of a trap. And it's got, like, locking mechanisms, and it's weird, and I don't like it. Again, don't get hit by this fire. You get hit by this fire, you get knocked back, and then you fall down, and it's over. Okay, so here's the final trial of the stage. I like to blow out that monitor. I just kind of, like, jump towards it. So this is the final trial of the stage, is this crap. I just run and jump past it as much as I can. And there you go. Now there's this thing here. So, this is the end of the stage. What the hell is this thing, right? Well, I'm emulating now, so I'm hoping that the reset actually works. But, yeah, there's something that you have to do. You have to destroy this, and then you have to soft reset your game. So, if you're using the actual hardware, like, you have to reset the game in real world, in your own physical world. So, I'm going to try it with this emulator. I've never tried it before, but this is soft reset, and you should get this. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you actually have to hit your reset button in real life in order for that to happen. Now, this is one of the most infamous things uh, that this game has to offer. Is that <laughs> there was really nothing like it before. Um, me and uh, me and the missus, we were talking about how, how unique that was. And it could very well be like the first of its kind to do that. And I think we came up with a couple other examples where you need to do stuff in real life in order to get past the game, like I think um, Metal Gear had uh, something like that too. Um, I forget the particulars, but yeah, so there you go. You actually have to hit the reset button, which is a major pain because um, back then when you got this far in this game, you know, and at least when I did, you know, like that was like the last damn thing I wanted to do. But um, at the very last second, uh, Xavier will tell you, hey, you know, like, you know, like, re re reset the system, reset the computer, reset this, you know, and you're, like, looking around, what the hell do I do? What do I do? <laughs> you know? So, um, you're just, like, yeah, you're just super confused. All right, we're going to go back to Nightcrawler. This is the final stage. Now, I'm not going to play this game again if I fail here. So, you know, it's, it's go for broke or, you know, just lose, whatever, you know. I mean, you've seen enough of the game. It's enough of a let's play, you know. I mean, this video is going to be long enough as it is. But yeah, isn't that amazing, though, that they actually had you do that? Now, honestly, in my opinion, that's the coolest thing in the whole game, <laughs> is interacting with the real world. So uh, what we're doing here now is we are in Asteroid On. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that, um, first off, yeah, if you're going to do this level, pick Nightcrawler to start out with. 
Um, any any of your X-Men that might have fallen, pretty much like every X-Men that you have that's usable, which is your top row here, um, if they die in any of the previous stages, um, they stay dead until you get access to the stage. Then they will actually be back fully powered up and ready to go. So, um, technically you kind of do get a nice amount of lives, but yeah, um, I wish they did it the more traditional way. So, with this, this, this is tough. This is Asteroid M, this is the last stage in the game. It's tough, I don't like it. I find it to be very, uh, very annoying, even though I've beaten it several times, I still, I don't like it. And there's always room for error, and there's always room for me to screw up and die, and I'm not going to do this again, you know? So, you got to be very careful hitting these guys. Um, they have very dangerous weapons on them as well. They're weapons that can actually, um hold you and they hurt you and the more you struggle with it the worse it hurts uh, I'm not going to show you voluntarily but um yeah you don't want to go down you want to teleport as much as possible yeah I don't know what's up with how you can jump in there like that but just do it um, jump through here and just keep going as far as you possibly can careful there's a guy at the end of the hall here and he will get a cheap one on you so I usually like to call in rogue to hit that fool and ooh, look at that <laughs> rogue how convenient a rogue icon so I teleport through there usually and then there's that guy right there so again I just call in rogue um, your your buddy obviously since this is the last stage we all know that Magneto's the last boss um, your buddies, your your assistant buddies here, um, you know, Rogue, Archangel, Iceman, and Storm, they're not really useful against Magneto. Sorry, I don't know why the hell I was tripping on my words there, but you cannot use them against Magneto, so, um, I mean, you can, I'm sure you can, but they're, like, next to useless, so, you know, use what you can on, uh, whatever trial is kind of, you know, giving you giving you grief there so um right here is i think there's a switch up there that you can hit but since it's like kind of out of range i just use Iceman here which probably wasn't the smart thing to do because he's a lot more useful in another uh, later section of the game now this guy yeah you don't want to get hit by that that thing hurts but you can just kind of ignore the guy i think i can just drop yeah Okay, so here is a scary part. So I usually just uh, use Storm. And yeah, that's no good either. So I'm going to blow my load here and I'm going to use uh, Iceman as well. Okay, sorry. I'm just kind of <laughs> inching out of it because I really don't want to get hit by their thing here. This guy's infamous for hitting me though. Well, I actually got him without screwing up. Now, this is probably the hardest part um, in the game. In the, yeah, probably the hardest obstacle that the game has to offer. Uh, man, I really don't like this guy, so I'm just going to do that. <laughs> so, um, usually I like to use Iceman here because uh, these platforms uh, that are moving like that, obviously, they can hurt. But also, um, the platforms that are ahead of me, uh, they actually fall down. Uh, Nightcrawler is not the best jumper in the world either, so this is going to be dangerous. I'm going to try my best to not die. Alright, these platforms won't fall. <laughs> that was probably the best I've ever done that, to be quite honest with you. Now we have a. Uh, ooh, man, I think I'm lagging. Maybe not. So, this guy. You don't want to get hit by him. I'm trying to get him to. Yeah, do that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That That's, that's not too bad, actually. Okay, so. Hmm, I'm trying to remember uh, how to go about this, but um, 
<laughs> We're gonna use Wolverine here. Uh, Wolverine's your strongest of the X-Men. But anyways, um, use Wolverine for the top path. These things won't really hurt him, but any other X-Men, it will hurt the shit out of them. So, only Wolverine. Come on, guy. I always forget about that guy, no matter what. Alright, and then there's one more dude. There you go. Screw him. Okay, and uh, now we are now we are at Magneto. Um, there's a good chance that I'm actually going to win. I don't want to jinx myself, but um, yeah, because I can still switch back. I think like maybe two more times. Um, he's gonna throw junk at me and just kind of be a jerk, but we'll see what happens. It's about a four second delay before he throws it, and even when I time it. One, two, three, four. I still get hit. Um, I don't want to risk anything. So I just be Nightcrawler and I just go right through them. See? One, two, three. He'll start coming at you. You don't want to touch them. Obviously, touch damage is a factor in this game, too. Stay low. <laughs> so that's. He'll, yeah, stay low. Sorry, I'm kind of concentrating a little bit. This is how I go after him. There's another way that you can um, kind of go after him. Um, if you don't want him to shoot projectiles, kind of like jump up like this and lure him like up there like that. And he won't go into that center platform, I noticed. Oh, I guess he did. Never mind. But it buys you more time, though, to escape. Or maybe I'm just making stuff up. I don't know. Either way, we got this locked and sealed. He's, he's a goner right here. There you go. So there you have it. That's X-Men on the Sega Genesis, 1993. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy. I enjoyed doing it. Sh you know, showing you guys. I know it's been a while since I kind of did a review um, slash a let's play. But um, I guess my bottom line on it is that uh, it is a really good game. The music's good. The graphics are good. Um, I think the difficulty's a bit ramped up. Uh, I think that uh, they did few levels and just jacked up the difficulty. And I think that's kind of a lazy thing. I think. Um, I know I'm saying I think a lot, I think, but instead they could have put in more levels, more content, and maybe dim the difficulty down a little bit, and just to think that there's another difficulty after Hero is just absurd, because you take a great amount of damage in this game as it is. There's plenty of enemies all over the place. The bosses aren't exactly easy. It took me years just to figure out, you know, like, how to handle them. Literally, you know, years. I mean, like... I just barely um, ended up beating this game. Uh, pff, not long ago at all, you know, since the making of this video. So, you know, I got the game back when I, I was nine years old. So, you know, it was a long time. I'm an adult now. So, you know, a long, long time ago. You know, back in the 90s. So, that that's it, though. But... Everything else I just felt was pretty good. I like the choices of X-Men that they have. They even try and give you, you know, a actual uh, proper storyline as well, which wasn't really too common for, you know, platformers, you know, back in that day. They didn't really, you know, get too in-depth. But I guess considering that it's a comic, comics are well known for what? You know, story, obviously. It always seems like it's story before, um, you know, like action and all that, right? So, at least those are, that's my opinion on it. There you go. That satellite gets destroyed. Magneto gets handled. I don't know what happens to him after that. And then you get this picture. And there's something really funny about this picture. There's no Nightcrawler in it. Yeah, your number one guy. 
throughout the game, and he's not even in the last picture. It's like, Psylocke is there, she didn't do anything. Beast is there, he didn't do anything. Okay, the professor should be there. Jean Grey should be there because she grabs you whenever you fall in a pit. But it's funny, like, Jean will grab you when you fall in a pit, but yet you still take damage. Like, if anything, it should be like, you know, like, you should get, like, one Jean freebie, and then, like, after that, you can't use her anymore, you know, just like the other mutants. And, uh, yeah, there you go. That's, that's X-Men right there for you. It just goes to credits, and <laughs> then you're, you're just, you're, you're officially done. So, I really don't know what else to say. I guess I'll just keep rambling on until the credits are officially done, just so we can put it in the books. But, uh, yeah, you know, let me know in the comics section. Uh, did I say comics section? Let me know in the comments if you like this style of review more, where I actually, like, get a bit more hands-on with the game and give my um, my thoughts, my ideas about it. Because, like, like, games that are shorter like this, I can definitely do. But, um... You know, uh, the, um... The cool thing about making an actual review is, you know, you got time to think it out, plan it out, you know, write the script, stuff like that. The only thing is, is that it's it's a lot of work. You know, like this right here, you know, it only took me like, what, 30, 40 minutes to do? You know, like, a, you know, putting together an actual review would consist of me writing the script and, you know capturing the footage, editing everything together, you know, it, it takes a while. I'm sure many of you YouTubers know that now. But let me know what style you like more, if you like the actual planned out style or you like this. But um, again, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and thank you for helping me get back to the basics. And we will see you next time.